Hi everyone, welcome back to the Data Science Lecture Series. Uh, and I want to do a quick recap of where we are. So we've been considering linear models. These are models of the form uh, y hat, our prediction, is some linear combination of our features. Um, I want to make this, uh, or stress this point, that the y hats we're thinking about, the things we're trying to predict, need to be quantitative continuous. These are variables that are things like price, uh, that are continuous values. In future lectures, we'll talk about predicting things that are more categorical, uh, but for now, we're just focusing on continuous values. And when I say linear combinations, I'm saying linear combination of these features. In, in this notation here, this is one row in my data. And so xj is a particular value in that row. Um, it could be the, the weight of a diamond. Um, and then the theta j's are my slopes or the, the uh, coefficients of this linear model. We also talked about having a constant term. So one of the sort of tricks we use to make everything fit in a simple summation is we define x0 to be a 1. So x0 is always 1, which means that theta0 becomes the constant in our model. Now, this is a linear model because it is a linear combination of features. And so again, our features are the xj's. These are the entries in our, in our row uh, that correspond to descriptions of the thing we're trying to make a prediction about. That's our xj here. And now one of the questions you might ask is, how can I apply these sort of techniques to data where my features aren't numbers, they're strings or, or categorical variables, um, or where my relationships are not linear, right? So what if my data is not a number or it is not linear? Um, and the focus of this lecture is how to deal with this setting. And so we can do this using the concept of feature functions. So a feature function is a mapping from some domain uh, this is our original data, so it could be some table for building a recommendation system. It might be a table that looks like this, or have information about the user ID, age, state, whether or not they purchased something, a review. And I want to map that into some vector space uh, that I can then operate on using these linear models. And so I'm going to say this vector space lives in this uh, n dimensional, so n rows in my table, by p plus 1 dimensions for the number of, uh, of features in my model. I'm going to find this function phi that maps between this vector space uh, as my feature map. Now, I want to note that I have a different number of features in this new vector space. So it's uh, not d. So in my original data had, let's say, d in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 dimensions in my original data set. But I'm going to map it into some p and p plus 1 so that I can deal with this constant term uh, space. Now, this feature space is something I get to construct. So I might have taken this table here on the, the left, the blue table, and map it to this green table. And this, this table is, uh, contains entries that are entirely quantitative. Um, and we might transform the values like age to something like age squared. You recall in earlier lectures, we talked about taking logs or square roots or exponents of our data to deal with nonlinear relationships. And that is essentially a form of feature engineering. All right, so that's our, our feature transformation. Again, I want to point out that we're using p up here to denote uh, the, the number of uh, feature dimensions we've produced. Um, and then this feature function, uh, the, the original data x, get replaced by this featureization of that data. And so this feature function gets to look at all the, the features and then produces a new feature based on that. In fact, it produces p new feature, p plus 1 uh, new features based on the entire row. And so they could be mappings that combine multiple values in the original data to produce a single new feature. Uh, a bit of notation, um, I'm using the phi function. This is the Greek pronounced phi or phi, but we'll call it phi because it sounds like feature. So this is our feature function, and that's going to transform our x to this, uh, to this vector space. So then we'll use the uh, capital phi to represent the, the transformed data frame. So we take our data frame x and n by d, uh, apply the phi function, which will transform it into this capital phi, which is our, our data in or our features in this um, p plus one uh, dimensional feature space, uh, where we again the plus one is because we're going to add this extra uh, constant term. All right, so this is an n by p plus one uh, matrix. So the design of these feature functions is a big part of what we do in machine learning and data science because these features are going to allow us to uh, transform our original data into something that we can more easily model with these linear models. So first, they'll allow us to capture complex or capture domain knowledge. Um, so we, we might believe that if we're trying to predict whether or not uh, or how much a, a customer might spend on our website, it might not matter exactly which point in the day they're, they're, they're purchasing. It might really matter is that in the morning or in the evening. So transforming 
our data from a timestamp to a, an indicator, whether or not it's morning or evening, might actually lead to a, a better model. Um, likewise, we've already talked about things like taking exponents or logs of particular features to linearize these relationships. That's already a form of feature engineering that we might apply to make it so that a linear model could more effectively capture what would be a non-linear or more complex relationship. Um, and, and, and to that end, we, we can substantially increase the expressivity of these models by taking something that might be a two-dimensional feature space and then lifting into a higher dimensional space with these feature functions uh, to capture uh, you know, the periodic patterns, uh, exponentials, um, all sorts of, of nonlinear structure. And we can do all that still within the context of a, a linear model. And keep in mind that we, when we say linear models, we're really talking about linear in these features, uh, not necessarily in the original data. All right, so we're going to be able to model nonlinear things by using these linear models. All right, so in the remainder of this notebook, we'll walk through the design of different kinds of feature functions, uh, how we can uh, model things that are, that are not numbers to begin with, so mapping strings, uh, categorical variables into something that we can model using these linear models. And we'll also talk a bit about building more complex features to, to model nonlinear relationships uh, in our data.